Well, hi there, soccer fans, and welcome to another edition of Onside, where the boys are in form. Budgie, spot on last week. We had a wonderful weekend and got the cash, and we're going to do the same again this weekend. So don't miss out on the show. We're going to have some fun. Delron, nice having you with us. Thanks, James. And Budgie? <laughs> All, we're back. Uh, Manchester United are back. I see you've got a bit of a, a smile on your face. Yeah, we're back, James. Yeah, yeah. Well, for and, the first off anyway. But uh, no, it's a good result. And Dolan, your team going all right? Uh, Manchester or Amazulu? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to get straight into the soccer, uh, the MTN 8 final and have a chat about that. Dolan, big game. Two teams that are playing really well. Bidvis Witz and uh, Mamelodi Sundowns. Yeah, definitely. It's good. It's well actually at MTN Cup final. Uh, if you see a bit vest, they've been on top form. They've won all their all their matches. MT, M, the MTN eight plus the PSL league. They've been beating top teams like Kaiser Chiefs and Barocca. And uh, I think plus they they got eleven days to to prepare themselves for yeah. for this cup final, which Sundowns don't have. They only have seven days to prepare. So it's going to be very interesting. How are you going? Well, I think uh, with Wits will probably win this one because of the 11 days they have to prepare and uh, Sundowns they play in um, away next week so they only have 7 days so it's going to be really tough for them. Raji, do you concur? Yeah, a close game. I've got to side, up, side with Sundowns. I think one way or another the goalkeepers are going to prove who the right one is. I think Manim Joseph is back for Wits after suspension but the Sundowns keeper I've been very impressed with. How he handles the aerial salt from Wits will be key, whether they can win or not. But it's a close game. They're both playing well. You know, Sundowns got to the CAF Champions League final last week. They beat Zeska of Zambia 2-0. So they come in, in my opinion, as slight favourites. But it should be a good game. Well, the clever boys, I think they should they'll probably win it. You know, they've had no school because um, the universities are on strike. So, you know, you've got to be with the clever boys. Yeah, you can, James. It's a close game. <laughs> close game for me. OK, we're going to move on uh, to English Premier League and uh, we're going to start with the Friday night game. Let's go and have a look at that. Everton Crystal Palace. Now, Everton seemed to battle against Chris Crystal Palace, Delroy. Yeah, definitely. Crystal Palace is a good team. As you, as you can see, the last three games they, they won uh, with the new signing of uh, Benteke. He's doing very well, so it's going to be really tough. Plus Everton at home, good team, very strong team, very st uh, uh, difficult to beat. So it's a game that's going to be very, very interesting. They slipped last week, Everton, didn't they? Yeah, they got beaten the League Cup by Norwich, who made 10 changes, championship side. Then they got well beat at Bournemouth. I know the scoreline only, was only 1-0. Yeah, I think the wheels could slowly be coming off that Everton. But at home, great chance to recover. But this won't be easy. Yeah, I, 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 just looking at the last five results, um, draws and um, yeah. and very close matches between the two of them. You know, the last match was a two, two all draw, I think, yeah. last year. So, uh, can you go high on the goals? It should be, you know, Friday night game. One interesting uh, fact about it is Yannick Balassi, who was at Crystal Palace last year, he signed for Everton. So, I think you can expect a bit of fireworks, yeah. A couple of cards, maybe go high on the cards. Let's have a look at the next one. We start on Saturday, the early game, the one o'clock game. That's Swansea against Liverpool. This should be a cracker. Dalra? Definitely. Well, if you see Swansea, I think the coach is probably one of the three that's going to be sacked if we don't win this game. Plus, it, it, it's after this game, it's going to be the international break and then comes Arsenal. Right. So he has to produce. Can he produce against Liverpool? They look so good. They look so strong up front. Yeah, but if, if you see the stats, their home games, they, they're not strong at home. They're not very strong. They lost a few games. They lost to uh, Man City, to Hull. It's very really difficult for them. And plus, Liverpool is a team that, that's playing magnificent football. Yeah, so the it's point, is, difficult. point is Liverpool do look like a, the, the banker in this, in this game. Should be, yeah. Should be yeah. So we're going to go number three here. Oh, you've you got a banker. Yeah. The only thing in Swansea's favour is Liverpool concede goals. Yeah. So hopefully their shooting boots are on for but the Swansea fans. But can, can Swansea score goals? Oh, and I can they so. score enough goals to beat Liverpool? Because Liverpool do score a lot of goals. No, they do. But you see, you're asking about can Swansea score? Mm. Remember, they gave Man City a hard game. It was one all for a while. Who gave Man City a hard game last yeah, night? Swan oh, Man City. <laughs> Celtic. Celtic, Celtic yeah. ended up drew drawing with him. There's no De Bruyne now, remember. Right? Yeah. So yeah, well, that I think makes a big difference. Massive. De Bruyne is, is key, isn't he? Difference, yeah. He's the yeah. engine of the car. Yeah. at the moment. 
Okay, uh, West Ham, Middlesbrough. Both battling? Sure. Pressure game, yeah. <laughs> You know, last week when West Ham got beat 3 0 at home to Southampton, the fans were going berserk. They were walking out before the end. Mm. Billich, I think, second favourite to get sacked. Yeah. You know, at home, this new Olympic Stadium hasn't worked for them, and this is a big game for West Ham. What does that say, Tara? Well, as Baji said, that I see the problem with West Ham is that they, they can't win. Mm. You know, it's quite difficult because now they, they're playing in the Olympic Stadium. And, and the stadium is quite bigger, so they got to get used to the stadium. There was an interview which uh, Thierry Henry made. He was saying when, Liverpool, when Arsenal changed stadiums from, yes. from Highbury to, to Emirates, Emirates, you know, yeah. it took them one year to integrate into the stadium because of how big it was. Mm. And that's the same problem which West Ham is having at the moment. I, don't, I think Arsenal is still not as good at home as they are away. They seem to be a bit of an away team. They, they still seem to have that pressure, the fan pressure, and they haven't really... I know they've won a lot of games at home, obviously, but that does make a big difference. You as a, as a, a soccer player, um, is it just the feel that you have on your pitch? What does it feel like, you know, that being on a new stadium, stadium that you're not used to? Well, if you plan on the same stadium a week in, week out for, the, for several years and now you have to change stadiums and play in a different stadium, it makes it quite difficult because, as I said, uh, the distance of, of, the, of, of the field is much enormer. Mm. So then you always used to play in a compact field, which makes it much better for a team that can play this tiki-taka, you know, mm. thing going forward. Mm. Now, all of a sudden, the field is much bigger. You have to get used to it. It takes time. Because every, every player has a different, men, different mentality of how to approach a game. If, if I'm a striker and if I'm playing on a, on a small, small pitch, it makes my life much easier. But if the pitch is, is much bigger, it means more running when you're defending and more running when you're attacking. And you're burning more energy. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be fitter. Got to be fitter. So how do you read this game? Do you think Middlesbrough can win it? Yeah, they could. They could win it. So is it a one, two, three game or? Definitely in my opinion. One, two, three game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on to Hull City versus Chelsea. I think Chelsea will bounce back. They got a good hiding last week from well, a property. They were non-existent in the yeah. first half, weren't they? You yeah. know, I think 11 beacons in blue would have put up a better performance than last week. If they don't react this week, well, Conte's got one hell of a job, but you would expect them to react this week. Yeah. Where does John Terry coming back? More than likely off the international break, yeah. I don't think they'll rush him back. Yeah. He, he seems to be key. I think that you find this with a lot, a lot of teams, uh, Delron, that there's one player seems to be key. When he's around, you talk about the brainer. John Terry seems the same. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, he's been there for many years playing for Chelsea. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, I mean, well, he's a defender that, that calms the whole team down. I mean, if I'm playing for John Terry, and every time if he's not there, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a little bit scared because he's the, he's, I'm, well, he's the engine of the car. Yeah. You know, he's the brand of the team. He holds it all together. He holds it all together, yeah. But we can go with Chelsea with confidence, I would have thought. Should yeah. be. Should be. Okay, Sunderland, West Brom. Uh, both, uh, Sunderland seemed to be playing a bit better. A bit better, but the last 30 minutes were two up against Palace and blew it and got beat 3-2. At yeah, the bottom of the league, they're struggling. This is a big game for them. The only thing I can see that's going for them is they've got Jermaine Defoe. If he got injured, I don't know how they would score. How's our little guy going? Uh, Stephen Pinnock. Yeah. yeah. He's okay. But, you know, <laughs> he's under <laughs> pressure, though, in that team. You know. I, I saw that, uh, and <laughs> told him that he had a lovely interview and he has said, said that uh, he'll hold the team together. It was quite interesting watching it on Supersport. It was fun. Well, if he gets fit, definitely. I mean, he's a good player, no, no doubt about that. Yeah. Just that I, I want to see him play more often because I believe that he can probably push this team much further. Well, I would think he'd help Defoe. He would, he would be a help to a guy like Defoe who is a poacher and a real goal scorer. Yeah, um, no doubt going forward but the problem they've got is at the back. <laughs> well, thank God he doesn't have to worry too much about that. Um, how do we go there? I've gone West Brom in a draw. I just think Pulis is a master at going away from home, setting his stall out, making sure they go in at half time, at least drawing, mm. and the home fans will more than likely turn on their team and then they could sneak with a set piece or so. Okay. Watford of Bournemouth. Another one. Uh, well, Bournemouth okay. were, played well against Man United, but on Monday against Burnley, they were non-existent. Every tackle they lost, they got beat 2-0. They were never, ever in the heat. You, know, you can expect a reaction here, especially at home. They, they seem to blow hot and cold, Dolron, and when they play well, Bournemouth, they're quite a good side. 
It's a really good side. If you see the, uh, the seven away league games, they've won one, they drew one and lost five. Mm. So it's a team, they're not good, good when they're playing away. But they, they're very good on, on set pieces, yeah. if you watch them. So can we go Watford here? I'll, <laughs> I'll go with a draw. You go with a draw? Yeah, yeah. this is a game. Bournemouth have come, right, have come well. You know, six points from the last three league games since Walsh arrived. Man City beat them. This is going to be, for me, one of the better games of the weekend. I know it's two unfashionable teams, but I think two teams that have had their blips, but I think they're going to come right. I think this is a draw, and this is a tough game. So one, two, three game for me yeah. in the exotic. Go high on the goals? Yeah, I think both yeah. teams will score, yeah. yeah. Okay. Move on to uh, Man United uh, against uh, Stoke City. Can you beat them? If you don't beat them... <laughs> I think Old Trafford will be going berserk again. I think Mark we Hughes should. is going to pull one over you. Uh, it's a lunchtime kickoff. <laughs> you know, something is going to go right for Stoke eventually. They were unlucky last week. West Brom equalised in injury time. They should have won. Haven't got a good record at Old Trafford. You know, the way United played in the first half, this should be easy. But it, until you get the first and then obviously the second, then these games are in the balance. It will be easy, I think, Dalron. What do you think? Well, if men don't win this, then I don't know, because the last game I've seen him play against Leicester, it was, it was top performance. And I was happy for Pogba to score, to get his self-confidence. You know, for him to be now integrated into the team, to give more uh, potential going, I mean, winning games. And if you see the stats with, uh, with Stoke City, they haven't won at, at Old Trafford since 12 games. 12 games? 12 games, 12 matches. Draw so doesn't come into it. I don't think. I think there's should, Man United should score too many goals for these guys. Well, they should win. Okay, we're going one there. Leicester, Southampton. Well, Leicester were absolutely fabulous against Porto. How they held them out with the last ten minutes was uh, unbelievable. Dalron, it was a, a big game for them. They might just be a bit flat after that. Well, uh, hopefully they have a, they have a big squad of a team to, to rotate. But uh, Leicester's doing very well in Champions League. They won two games now. And just a pity they lost last week for one <laughs> against Manchester. <laughs> so, um, yes, and they got a home game. So at home, they're very strong. They haven't lost 18, 18 home games, the last match, 18 home games, they haven't lost. So it's very difficult to beat them at home. Very difficult. So are, they, are they a one home, home win? No, I don't think so. I think one and you two. You know, Southampton played well last week. The only yeah. thing with Southampton is they're playing the Europa League tonight. Yeah. They play in Israel in the desert, so the guys were saying. Now, they've rested four players. They've kept the left-back Bertrand, Font, and Charlie Austin, I think, at home with a midfield player. Mm -hmm. This won't be easy for Leicester. You know, Southampton are coming slowly. But they've only lost once in the last 25 home league games, and that was to Arsenal last year, Leicester. Mm -hmm. They're hard to beat at home, and that crowd gets up for it. Maybe the draw, but, you know, I don't like backing teams that play in the Europa League on a Thursday, especially away from home and have a game like this on Sunday. You would think Leicester should win, but it won't be as easy as everybody thinks so. And, and on top of that, I, I think teams that play really hard during the week seem to just flatten out a bit over the weekend. You often find this is where you get the results. You know, A team like Leicester played their hearts out to, yeah. to beat Porto. Uh, can we, could, could we go one, two, three, or do you just think one, two? Yeah, no, I think one and two. It'd be hard for Southampton to win with the Thursday Europa League game, but yeah. they are capable of snatching a draw. That's what do you think as well, Dora? I think oh, well, I'll go for one. One, yeah, okay. One, one and the, for the bigger perms, one and two maybe. Tottenham and Manchester City. Well, this has got to be mouth-watering. Sunday game? Sunday game, yeah. No, it depends on what, whether the Spurs can score or not. Yeah, a couple of my mates, with Harry Kane going down, they've got Janssen up front. He doesn't look the finished article to me. Luckily, the I think South Korean Sun scored a goal, the goals in the last few he games. He scored two good goals, scored, didn't he? Yeah, two against Middlesbrough, one in midweek. Hmm. Whether they can you know, contain Aguero is the problem. Defensively, they're very sound. But with, if De Bruyne had been playing at 11 or 10 Man City, I think you could have had a good bet. But without De Bruyne, I think it becomes more of a tactical game I just don't see Spurs scoring more than one goal. That's the only problem that I have for Tottenham fans. But Man City, I've been saying all along they're bad at the back and everyone's been jumping down my throat. Well, you watched them against Celtic last night. They aren't bad at the back. Yeah. I mean, sorry, they are bad at the back. And this will be a tight game. Dalron, 
last night's game was a bit of an eye opener because you would have thought that they'd be able to beat Celtic. Well, you know, these uh, Scottish teams like Celtic, Glasgow Rangers are teams very really uncomfortable to play against. Mm. That's why for me it wasn't coincidence that they, they struggled to beat them. And uh, re regarding Tottenham, I saw in the Champions League, they, they were re pop I think they were resting or these players were injured like Musa Dembele or Musa Sissoko and, and Rose. They were rested, didn't play in the Champions League game. So I don't know if they were resting these players for this game which is coming up against Man, Man City. So it's a very clever situation for Tottenham. He's a good coach, isn't he? He is a good coach. Plus, yeah, you, you can see the way he, he speaks to the players and, and the way he's playing. You know, the, the, the players like him. They have lot, lots of respect for him. I, th I, th I, th I think this is a game that Tottenham will win. Um, I know that you, you're not quite as sure. No, yes, I just don't see them scoring more than one goal. And seeing them contain Aguero could be a thriller, but I doubt it. I think it'll be a tactical encounter. I fancy a draw here. OK, let's go. The last one, and that's a Sunday game as well. Burnley against Arsenal. Well, we know what the result will be, um, just by how many. <laughs> Delra, what do the stats say? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal's a good team. They, 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 sorry, but surely they're finding uh, their, game, their game plan. And, um, yeah, when I watch Burnley, the last game they played, they're just good in set pieces. So if Arsenal can just be careful on that, there's a chance. Well, that's where Arsenal are bad, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but they, they've, they've shorted up a bit, this new signing that yeah, they got. He's done a good job. He's done yeah. a very it's good no job. no-name brand. He gets yeah. stuck in. That's yeah. what Arsenal need. They should win Arsenal. The only thing is, when, if you can remember Burnley playing Liverpool, you know, they didn't give them much space. You know, Liverpool had all the play. And obviously, Burnley had a little bit of luck with one or two of the goals. But this won't be easy for Arsenal. But you would expect them to win by... A couple of goals, yeah. Yeah, they'll definitely <coughs> win by a couple of goals. We're going to go on and have a look at uh, uh, Soccer 6. Well, the Soccer 6 pool closes at uh, 1.30 on Saturday, the 1st of October. So don't miss out. We've got a 216 Rand permit. We're going to run through it with Budgie. Swansea, Liverpool, you're going for the uh, Liverpool, they look the obvious. Yeah, choice. Liverpool look good things, so did Chelsea. Yeah. You know, I've gone West Brom in a draw. I don't trust Sunderland, the way they're playing at the moment. They've got to improve for me to put my money on them. I think Watford and West Ham are two tricky games. Now, the, I went with Sundowns in the last game, Sundowns in the draw. If people are worried about West, Middlesbrough getting a result at West Ham, then maybe go West Ham in the draw and put one, two, three with bid vest fits. Mm. But I'm going the other way. I'm going Sundowns in the draw and I'm going one, two, three with West Ham. Where do they play this game, Vitz Sundowns? It, uh, they're playing it in Nelspreit. They're playing it in Nelspreit. So no one has a home, gra home ground uh, advantage. Neutral venue. Yeah. Well, it could be a cracking good game. But that looks like a good start to the soccer uh, six. Uh, so and then we go to the Soccer 10, yep. um, which is uh, Swansea and Liverpool well, again. We bank obviously. at Liverpool. They do yeah. look good things. Birmingham at home are going well. Blackburn are struggling. I think Birmingham will murder them. Brentford, one of the best home records in the league. They beat Reading, who were unbeaten in six. They beat them 4-1 on Tuesday. We're bankering Chelsea. I've gone 1-2-3 and three with Derby, the Derby-Reading game. Now, interesting situation there. Derby suspended their manager, the guy Nigel Pearson, who used to be at Leicester. Yes, I saw that. He got that. suspended He's him and the chairman letter. fell out, a yeah. uh, big centre half. <laughs> and the guy Chris Powell was at Charlton, took the team and they won 2 0 away at Cardiff. So I've thrown that in, you never know. Cardiff have got players, yeah. they just haven't been scoring goals. So maybe with the manager going, maybe that'll be the, the change of luck that they need. So I've gone 1 2 and 3 with Derby. Right, then we move on uh, over the page. Yep, Sheffield Wednesday, Brighton. Yeah, this was a playoff game from last year. You know, Sheffield Wednesday beat them in the playoff. Yes. Uh, Brighton have gone the other way. Last year, they couldn't stop scoring. The last four games this season, they haven't conceded a goal. So Chris Hutton, the Tottenham boy and ex-Newcastle manager, he's tightened it up. So this will be a close game. Sheffield Wednesday don't get beat at home too often. But I've gone one, two, three in that. Could it not be a draw game? It could well be. You yeah. know, but it's hard to banker a draw, James. You know, Why is it hard to banker the draw? Well, it's 90 it's minutes the same of sweating. Result. It's no. the same result as any other I've way. done it before, and I tell you what, it's, 
when it arrives, it's great. But yeah. it's pressure when you're watching the game. I've gone for West Brom to get a draw or Sunderland. Watford and Bournemouth, one, two, three. Because of the perm size, I've gone West Ham in the draw against Middlesbrough. And I've gone for Norwich in the draw against Wolves. Now, Norwich last night was 3-1 up at Newcastle. Mm. They conceded three goals late on to get beat 4-3. But they've got plenty of players. Wolves have got a good home record. Yeah. You know, so it'll be a close game. Norwich, I think, are the second best team in the league behind Newcastle. So I've given them the benefit of the doubt there. Uh, th that could be a game where you're going to get goals. Should you be, can, yeah. should get plenty of goals because and I, I banked at uh, Newcastle last night. Yeah. I must tell you, I, ten minutes to go, I thought, well, well you've gone. Gone. You scored and two and goals no in injury yeah. time. Yeah. Absolutely no chance. So um, four bankers, three win draws, and three times fields. Uh, that's how we get to the 432 rand in the soccer ten. Remember, this also closes at 1:30 on a Saturday. We then move on to the Soccer 13 and this is the big money game. Is there any carryover into this pool? Not this week. Not Just this bear week. in mind the, the it's one rand 70 a line now. Yeah. It's come down 10 cents so that'll help a lot of the people. That, that makes a difference doesn't yeah, it? I did. Yeah. I did one last night with, with Bruce Armstrong, your owner. And I thought it was 170 and miscalculated. It was 180. Yeah. Hate to say Man City cost me, but anyway, that's yeah, how cost it goes. us all. Cost us all. Yeah. On the soccer 13, I've banked Chelsea. You know, I've gone two and three West Brom in the draw. I've gone Watford in the draw against Bournemouth. West Ham in the draw against Middlesbrough. I banked Brentford. I went uh, Bristol City, going well at home against Forest. Forest, went, Forest hard side to beat, wouldn't you think? Well, they... They scored the second most goals in the league, but conceded the second most goals. So they're a team that on their day will beat you three or four, but they can also ship goals in. But Bristol City are going well at home. They've yeah. won four and lost one. Only team that beat them was Newcastle. So the, of the two that I had to size because of the, the perm size, I had to side with them, which okay. I've gone. Huddersfield, top of the league over Ipswich. Ipswich can't score goals. That's why I've gone with, with Huddersfield. Yeah, I would think Huddersfield might be a banker. No, the way they're guys. going, they're going well. No, they're they? going well. They beat Rotherham 2 1 on Tuesday night, but it was a hard game, and Rotherham are bottom of the league. Hmm. Yeah, Switch don't get beat too often. Okay, well, let's go move on from there. Preston North End, your yeah, team. Uh, my boys. Your boys. You know, I see as, you've gone against them. Well, I watched us against Wigan last Friday, and we won 1 0, but we got outplayed. Jeez, it was shocking watching, but it was a good result. We drew two all at Birmingham midweek. You know, Aston Villa have drawn seven of the last eight league games. They can't win a game, but they'll be hard to beat there. So I've given them the benefit of the doubt. It is a one, two, three game, but because of the perm size, we've had to narrow it down. I've gone Reading in the draw against Derby. You know, I've banked Newcastle. I've given Brighton the benefit of the doubt against Sheffield Wednesday. Now, the last two games, BK Hacken against Malmo. They're the two Swedish Shelvins gun fixtures. Malmo are top of the league. They're one point clear. Now, the team they're playing against Hacken plan an artificial pitch. They've got a good home record. Malmo have got to win this game because next week they've got a league decider against the team at second, and they're playing away. Now, Malmo play on grass, but when I analysed it last night, of the six teams they've played away from home that have artificial pitches, they've won five and lost one. And because of the importance of the game and the 18 points clear of them in the league, and obviously perm allocation as well, I've banked Malmo. Ostersons play on an artificial pitch. Falkenberg don't. Falkensburg got nine points from 24 league games. Nine points. They're struggling. They've got to win their last six games to have a chance of staying up, which I think is impossible. Ostersons at home, fifth best record in the league. Banker. Look like a natural banker. Should be. Yeah. Interesting, these two games that they, they slip in here. These well, they uh, control games, the yeah. perm, James, yeah. so they've got to throw a couple of their games in to mm. get interest on their side. It's not hard for us. Mm. And this is, I said. So. <laughs> right, then we go on to Sunday. We've got a soccer six, and uh, this is an interesting one because uh, we get you, you, Manchester United, who I didn't think that you'd banker, but you have. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we always try and find. <laughs> couple of bankers in these exotics. I think if United can't beat Stoke, well, I don't know. You know, I've given Southampton, Leicester in the draw against Southampton. I think it'll be a difficult game. I've gone Man City in the draw against Tottenham. You know, I know Laff will be crying when he sees the show, but mm. that's how it is. The two German games, Wolfsburg, since they've sold Kevin De Bruyne, mm. they've gone absolutely Not backwards. Good. I know at home they'll be 
more than a match for Mainz who started the season well. So I've gone one, two, three because I perm, you know, we can do it. Banker, Arsenal, they should win in the last game. Skulker, they've lost all five league games. It's just strange. They've played the better teams in Germany, but the only game they've won is in the Europa League. And they beat Nice, who are top of the French League. They beat them 1-0 away. Mario Balotelli's team. Borussia Mönchengladbach last night lost 2-1 to Barcelona. Yeah, they, 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 they were 1-0 they were up, uh, weren't they? Can you remember who no. scored the goal? No. Eden Hazard's brother, Torsten. He scored the goal for, for Mönchengladbach. Likewise, Mönchengladbach at home are invincible. I think they've won the last 10 league games. And away from home, they can't win a game. Mm. So I've gone one, two, three. You just never know with these German sides. And we, we don't watch the games on TV. Yeah. So it's difficult to get a grip on it. But uh, Well, it seems like two, um, we got a bit of fun on Sunday. And that pool closes on Sunday at 1 o'clock. Remember, 1 o'clock the pool closes. 216 Rand perm. And then the business. Because Budgie, every week gives you a couple of bets. And I can tell you, we're... On a winning streak. Uh, after listen, left, you can uh, blow your trumpet. No, no. When they're winning, you have a go. Yeah, because there are very few pundits who can claim that they win every single weekend. And we've won every single weekend. Uh, you've had a good start, James. Yeah. I look at it the other way. If it goes pear-shaped, you know. Listen. <laughs> you're right, you've got to have a go. It's and, very difficult to win mm. at any gambling. And the, this uh, is gambling the highest order because we know that we've got... Uh, Analysts that work out exactly what's going on. So you start off with a treble. Yep, I've gone Birmingham City at home. I think they'll beat Blackburn. Brentford at home. I think they're playing Wigan. Atletico Madrid. I was impressed. I watched them last night against they Bayern. Well, didn't they? Good game. It's mm. a Sunday lunchtime kickoff against Valencia. Mm. But he's got a big squad there, and I think they should be too good for Valencia. Who've been struggling. I know they've won their last two games, Valencia, but you know I haven't been impressed with them. Here's a market I like, the both teams to score market. Swansea and Liverpool, Watford and Bournemouth, and I think Burnley will score against Arsenal. Could be 5-1, but I think they'll grab one. Yeah. That works out at 1,085 to 200. In the Championship League, which always has, has plenty of goals of yeah. late, yeah. I've gone Preston and Villa, Rotherham and Newcastle, and Bristol City and Notts Forest, 990 to 200. Okay, so we spent 600 there. Yeah. We've got a couple more bets to um, And uh, we'll get them up now. Over two and a half over goals. Over two and a half goals market. I think Swansea, Liverpool, over two and a half. Bristol City, Forest. There's always goals with Forest. And Osasuna, Las Palmas. That's my team in, in Spain. They just attack, attack, attack. Las Palmas, you love them, yeah, don't you? Yeah, then yeah. Canary Islands. They drew 2-2 two, two or 3 Al Madrid last Saturday. Yeah. Brilliant game. Yeah. Yeah, they just they have a full go. You had them in last week. Yeah, as we had them in there. We had, yeah. Yeah, over three and a half goals. goals they yeah. equalise an injury time. <laughs> then the, the multiple. Real Madrid are playing Arbor. They must score over three and a half goals. So they've got to score at least four goals. Bayern Munich play Cologne at home. They average over three goals a game at home. I've gone for Bayern Munich to score over two and a half goals, which is score at least three goals. And then both teams to score in the osasuna Las Palmas game, 1,085 to 200. Well, you, you certainly you're going to get over the two and a half goals. So, you know, it, it's interesting th these, how you put these bets together. Yeah. Because if you catch them right, you're going to win some money and pay for your whole weekend. Yeah, James, you know, putting three together, I've sat and worked it out. If you get three, eight to ten shots, it works out at five to one. Mm. So ideally, we get the thousand rand from track and ball every week. Mm. So if one of the bet clicks, we, we're in a profit. I can't take four to ten, four to ten, one to, you know, I can't do that. You know, any person that knows football can sit, what's the four shortest teams and take a foursome. You know, I try and get a little bit of value and also to make punters try and enjoy their punting. Yeah. You know, and that's the whole idea. Well, the thing is, is that they will be enjoying their punting because every weekend, as I say, has been a winning weekend. And obviously, track and ball um, are thrilled about that. They like to have winners on their side as well. They're not thrilled. <laughs> I was with Perig yesterday. He was whinging like... But no, he's, I'm grateful for the support he's given us. And yeah. it's good fun. And I know Perig eyes the bets. Uh, yeah. so, but he's been quiet of late. Yeah. This, the, the whole thing about having any tipping show is that you've got to be able to tip winners to people. Mm. And I think this show has been very, very successful. And hats off to you and Delron. You guys have been spot on. Well, we try. You know, we do the research. It's never easy. But... Uh, you know, especially being under camera. You know, people say, why didn't you say this? And why? You know, it's difficult, James, as you know. But, you know, we give it our best shot. And so far, 
It's been okay. Well, they give it their best shot, and I can tell you, uh, the best shot's well worth having a good look at. And for those of you that uh, get the show, follow up what these guys have got to say. They're pretty sharp, they know their business, and uh, from onside and uh, mega game, you have a great weekend soccer.